What is up, Warrior Rising family? I'm Alyssa. I'm the director of marketing and media for Warrior Rising. And here we hear from the many voices that make Warrior Rising the premier place to be for veteran entrepreneurs. Today, we are talking to the third place winner of the Iowa Business Shower, Jasmine Paul of the Wealth Playgrounds. And I am so excited to be here right now and talk to her and pick her brain about her experience and her business. So without further ado, welcome, Jasmine. Thank you so much, Alyssa. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. So first off, how was your experience in Iowa? Let's just start there. What what happened there? <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun. Okay, I wasn't expecting snow, but yeah. it was <laughs> I live in Texas. I live in Texas. We live in Texas, right? So we yes, were not expecting exactly. snow. <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was such a great experience. I didn't know really what to expect. Um I remember Teresa talking about like, you just, just brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself, you know, for yeah. just the amount of conversations and the people who are going to be interested in your work. And it was really cool. It was overall a really great experience. Never have been to a, a hunting lodge before and yeah. being able to talk to people, you know, in just, they have like such a really cool story. And so I love being able to talk to people and, and hearing their story. So overall, it was a really great experience. Awesome. I love to hear that. So with the Wealth play Playground, people that don't know and didn't get to hear the pitch, tell us yeah. a little bit about what that is and how you started it. Yeah. So I started the Wealth Playground. Um, I feel like this is the iteration of what I was doing kind of early on in my military career. Um, so my senior year of college ended up going through some financial struggles, living in my car and on friends' couches um, for a few months. And I remember graduating commissioning to the Air Force and like telling myself, you cannot live this life again. Like you can't be living, you know, paycheck to paycheck, mismanaging your money. And so learned as much as I could about budgeting, saving and investing. Um, ended up buying my first property at the age of 23 paying off awesome. my student loans by the age of 24 and then teaching my friends. And that's really how the Wealth Playground started. It was from my friends, like, how did you get out of debt? We're not making a lot of money as second lieutenant. What are you doing yeah. differently? Yeah, that's where it started. That's so incredible. And so your your target audience, though, is for children. You're actually a children's book author, well-renowned, yeah. and you were chosen in Harvard as well for their curriculum. So talk to us a little yeah. bit about that. And how did you, uh, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like learn younger, but like yeah. tell us that little patch that together for us. Yeah. So um, I was teaching young adults and young professionals. And then in 2020, I started having more conversations with my sister, who's a uh, Gen Z and we were having conversations about high yield savings and investing. She was wow. like really locked in and as a high school student. And I'm like, okay, we're having these dialogues, like what's happening here? And um, I just awesome. felt like there was an opportunity to, instead of complaining about like, I wish I learned this as a kid, like why not pivot and transition into teaching kids about money? I absolutely love that. And it's so incredibly important. I remember um, I had to have been in my 20s, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, when you're living that like paycheck to paycheck or like, where the heck is my money going? Are you, you know, not organized in your house and you're buying the same things over and over? Yeah. Um, I, I bought the book, like Your Money or Your Life. And it like completely oh, changed. Okay. It, it changed my mind. But I think having the kids, your first book, if I'm not mistaken, was A Boy, A Budget and a Dream, which is actually like behind you. So what's the story behind that? The story behind the story. Uh the story behind the story. So I was um, in Florida, stationed in Florida at the time, and I was driving home one day. And all of a sudden, I kid you not, Alyssa, like this story just kind of drops into yeah. me. And I feel I feel like it was from the Lord. And like, yeah. I feel like there was, yeah, just a story about these two little kids who were siblings talking about money. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it down in my journal. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, I've never, I've never written a children's book. Like, what is this? And then I put it on the shelf because I, that was in 2019, had no idea of like what to do with it. And then those conversations started with my sister, you know, at the height of the pandemic. And I was like, well, I do have this story about kids. Like, let me take it out. And that's where it started. Um, it was wow. in my car, you know, just a random idea. And then the pandemic, I feel like kind of like ushered me into like, okay, let's, 
let's do something about this. Let's actually figure out how to create a book. And um, yeah. That's awesome. I love that story. And I think the pandemic was either a win or a severe loss for some people. You either took advantage of that time or did absolutely nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, again, with the the industry that you're in and the target audience that you're looking at, like mm -hmm. kids and empowering them, um, yeah. what, what has been their most rewarding aspect mm -hmm. of teaching financial education to kids? I feel like it's so much. Um, mm -hmm. You know, to see young people say like, wow, this has been so complex for me and I did not understand, like people would come in and teach us and it would go over my head and you, you were able to break mm -hmm. it down in a way that's relatable, fun, entertaining and engaging, but also like they can understand it and they're able to apply it. Um, and not just for the kids aspect, usually there are adult um, adults in the room, whether it's their teacher, their um, organizer, and they are taking something away from it. Um, I had an organizer uh, for an organization I did a workshop for, and she wrote me a letter saying that she was able to start her first retirement account based off of the different things that I shared. And so to have an adult say like, wow, wow this is, this is impacting my life is, it's incredible. I feel like people don't dream big because of money, right? They, they limit mm -hmm. their desires and their dreams because of access to money and to be able to create that access and to create able to be able to say like, Hey, it's possible. Like I went from, you know, living in my car to not living in my car, you know, and, and, you know, changing my money mindset. So obviously you've had an incredible impact, right? On adults, on kids, everything like that. So what beyond maybe just, um, basic financial, what kind of impact are you looking to have beyond? Like, what does the future hold? What, what legacy are you trying to leave? Yeah, I, you know, I always pride myself in going beyond the spreadsheet. Um, I think there's so much more power in like learning about budgeting, learning about saving, learning about investing. Like those are really great things, but I also think there is a level of stewardship that you have to have and a level of giving that you have to have also. And yeah. I, I feel like that's like coupled together really makes an awesome human being. Of course, we all have our flaws, but I want to yeah. be able to empower young people just to have the confidence to dream big. I think if we all show up in that purpose of dreaming big and really aligning to what we're supposed to do on this earth, it would be unstoppable. We would be so like incredibly amazing, just helping others and being able to walk in our purpose. I feel like we were not placed on this earth to just live and die. You know, we were not placed on this mm -hmm. earth just to work and die. And so, um, yeah, I, I really want young people and all people, honestly, just to see themselves as like, whoa, I can literally do anything. I'm not going to allow you know, how I grew up or where I grew up to stop me, I'm going to be able to make my mark on this world. And I'm going to be able to inspire others to do the same. I, I love that. So much. I keep saying that because how you're speaking is just it's so beautifully said. Um, mm. I think a lot of people do limit their their own potential. They don't realize that it's completely uncapped. Like we don't even know what that ceiling is. Um, Absolutely. And we, if we if we allow our environments, if we allow other people to dictate how we show up in the world, like, that that's on us to to yeah. captain our ship. So I think it's it's powerful. And I also do you think in the future of school in like schools and education that this mm. is something that needs to be implemented. I mean, if I remember correctly, in school we learned how to write a check, but I'm like, what is yeah. that doesn't teach me how to save, how to budget, how to pay taxes, how to buy a house. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that, how do you see uh, something uh, like this? Uh, do you see any initiatives towards going to schools for children and having something? Uh, Absolutely. Input. Absolutely. So that's currently what I'm working on is, um, you know, building, finalizing my curriculum for schools. But also, I do think there are legislation, there is legislation being passed right now. So as of right now, 20, about 28 states have mandated financial literacy in schools. Um, wow. I think it should be all 50. <laughs> I yeah. think every state should be mandating. <laughs> but of course, that's a work in progress. But yeah. I do feel like because young people are speaking up, you have so many trends on TikTok and Instagram and whatever social media platforms like loud budgeting, right? Girl math. People are really taking like 
not to say girl math is a good thing, but people are really <laughs> opening the conversation to money where it was so closed off before. You know, so many people didn't talk about money because it was taboo and, you know, kids yep. don't talk about it. But now kids are are very open and parents and caregivers are very open and having conversations. And so I do think there's a shift happening right now. And it's it's imperative to have programs available um, as that shift happens as that shift happens. Absolutely. And I think too, that with like the literacy of it and um, the, I don't want to say demonizing, but it's like, oh, money is the devil. Like it's really not, mm. um, you know, we need it to live, but how, how do you, um, how do you seamlessly make that a conversation where people become comfortable with it? Maybe they, it's uh, yeah. one of those things where if you don't talk about it, you repel it too. If you're scared For of sure. it, you're going to repel it. If you believe in any kind of universal or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I look at, um, I, I start everything off with a money story because we all have one, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's a good one or bad one, whatever, there's a story behind our money. And so I try to, especially for young people, I try to make sure I share with them like, yes, this is how it started, but this is the, doesn't necessarily have to end this way. And it also isn't always about the material things, right? It's about mm -hmm. the giving back the service. That's something that's really important to me. That's why, you know, I served in the military and I will continue to serve, you know, throughout my lifetime. But I try to share, like, it's not about monetary or, you know, these, these gains that you can get for yourself, yeah. but what can you do for your community? What can you do for your family? What can you do for others? I try to share that within the books, um, within the workshops that I share, because, yeah, I mean, it's not all about, you know, how many zeros are in your bank account. That's great. But if you're, how yeah. are you showing up for others? How are you, you know, being a good friend to others? How are you being a good family member to others? How are you being a good, you know, contributing member in your community? So I try to share from that perspective. Yeah, that's a great perspective. And as a as a parent and two other parents listening, um, yeah. what would your what would a piece of advice be for for parents that um, maybe need to help themselves? But how do they teach their yeah. kids? I know I have one who as soon as he gets a, a dollar bill, he thinks he needs to spend it immediately. <laughs> yeah, I think really talking. So the first conversation that I share with any adult who wants to talk to young people is really starting with what you value. Um, cause usually where, what you value is where your treasure is. Right. And so, mm -hmm. um, that's where you spend the most of your time. That's where the, you spend the most of your resources. And so I, I talk about, you know, going as simple as, you know, for me personally, I value shelter. I value clean water. I value electricity. That's how I'm able to communicate in my business. Um, I value, you know, clean spaces. Right. And so, then having the conversation of these are the things that we value and we're able to earn income to keep and maintain the things that we value. Maybe you value like travel experiences over gifts, right? You value those travel experiences because it's an opportunity to make memories, but also learn a new culture or learn something new. And so um, I think really understanding what your values are, your core values as a family, um, and then being able to share that with young people. Um, and then just don't be afraid to share about the mistakes. Kids can mm -hmm. learn from your mistakes. Um, you might be, you know, shameful or feel like there's guilt around those mistakes, but it's so important to share and be vulnerable about, um, of course, you don't have to share everything, but sharing like, hey, you know, it, when I was down this road, maybe I should have, maybe I should have changed, you know, positions, maybe I should have went a different direction. And I'm sharing this because I don't want you to go down that same path as well. Um, but there's so much value in storytelling and being able to share your money story as well. Absolutely. I, I just love how you speak on that. You've obviously done a ton of work in this and have become such a role model. Um, I loved, even if anyone check out her website too, because there's some awesome photos and just testimonials and um, collaborations as well. So speaking a little bit about collaborations, how do you... Yeah. How do you begin to find other people mm. in the space that yeah. want to have those conversations? Mm. Um, how do I do this? It's all, it's <laughs> all, it's been like organic, you know, it's been, it's awesome. um, just really being genuine. I try not to be transactional with people. I try to, like, I really like, um, one of my friends, he was a army major. He retired recently. Um, and he mentioned like, interesting people are interested in people. 
he mentioned that to me when I was a captain. And like that always stuck with me because it's mm-hmm. true. Like, I think I'm pretty interesting. And in order for me to see other people and hear their stories, like I have to be interested in them. And so that's how the conversation start. It's just really like, I'm just intrigued about what you're doing. I think you're dope. Like, let's connect. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um yeah. So you have like these workshops, you have books, you have things like that. Do you have any other, uh, what, what projects on the horizon for you right now? Yeah. So the curriculum is what I'm working on right now, hoping to drop before the summer. Um, but it'll be an opportunity for really facilitators to come in and teach financial literacy. So even if you're scared, you're like, how am I supposed to teach someone? It would be yeah. easy, open and go for you to pick up and be able to teach Um, the young people in your life, whether that's at a school or whether that's at a um, summer program or wherever you are serving children. So that's currently what I'm working on. I'm about to say that next, that this next generation of financial leaders is going to be insane, especially with legislation being passed, as you said, education like this, curriculums being in place. I mean, right now we're in a very unique time too, where a lot of kids want to be a social media person or they want to be an entrepreneur. Mm. I think it's a very different generation. It's not just being thrown into the nine to five. It's not even going to college sometimes, which Facts. I'm a huge proponent of like whatever you're happy doing. Cause honestly, you can't tell anyone they can't make money from doing something that they love because you see it everywhere. Right. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. There's so as, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, <laughs> I was just saying there's, there's so much emphasis in, um, one, the trades, right? The trades are yep. coming back and people, we need people like even just yeah. me as a consumer, like I, there's, I feel like there's such a shortage in those areas. And so I think, um, I think there's a healthy balance, right? If you want to go to college and learn that way, you can do that. You want to go to trade school. If you want to go to community college, like whatever floats your boat. Um, but I agree there's, there's so many ways to be able to serve and be able to make money while you're doing it. No, absolutely. Absolutely correct. And I just formerly, you know, I worked for uh, plumbing wholesale. So I deal with plumbers Mm. and contractors, again, a trade. So it's like, you know, I'm selling those parts. But again, it is a shortage. So what you say, what you're saying is true, like we need everyone doing everything, you know, not everyone can be a social media influencer, we've been a lot of trouble. Um, Right. (laughs) We we have a heck of a lot of trouble. But um, As an entrepreneur yourself, if you are speaking to another veteran entrepreneur or Mm. a veteran who doesn't know what to do, they're exiting, transitioning Mm. is the scariest Mm. thing, loss of purpose, loss of identity, loss of camaraderie, all these different things. What are Mm. your pieces of advice for someone transitioning, maybe, um, let's say, into entrepreneurship? Mm. Wow. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to share what I needed to hear. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Because I recently went through my transition last year. Um, I would say give yourself some time and space to like decompress. That was something that I feel like no one really shared with me. Um, Yeah. Every time (laughs) I like every time I saw people who either transitioned or retired, they went straight into the next job. Um, And I. That was me. I feel, Not me. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of people. And so I think giving yourself time and grace to like really process this transition, because it is a loss. There's like a grieving that happens. Mm-hmm. At least for me, it did. Like, I love my military career. I enjoyed it. Um, so there was like, there's this process of grieving. So give yourself some time to heal and decompress and whether it's go on a vacation or go away. Like I went to Europe for a month and it was just like, like I could breathe a little bit yeah uh, just a little bit because then I came back to reality but like I could breathe (laughs) just like okay so give yourself some time to heal some space um as far as entrepreneurship there are so many programs available for entrepreneurs I think you just have to find one or many whatever works for you um you know warrior rising I mean there's just so many bunker labs so many Mm -hmm. IBMF, I guess now, um, there's so many entrepreneurship related programs available. Um, I like the programs that are not veteran related, but I feel like there's just such a warm and fuzzy that I get with being with other veteran entrepreneurs because they get it. They get it from the standpoint of like serving their country and all of the 
stuff that went with that, but they also get it from, you know, an entrepreneurship um, space as well. And so I, I've loved the veteran community. I feel like they have embraced me um, where in other communities have, it hasn't been that way. And so I'm, I'm truly grateful. Um, so one, so heal, get connected. And then number three, I think just show up as your authentic self. Like yeah. people want to hear these veteran stories. When I share about, you know, being a missile officer, being deployed to Afghanistan, they're like, what? You did <laughs> what? I'm like, to me and you, right? It's so yeah. normal, right? But to yeah. the, the average person that hasn't served in the military, they're like, you did what? What? That's <laughs> and so, Is that only yeah. in movies? <laughs> exactly they tell me like that sounds like a movie and I'm like oh no this was like normal life for me that's a and... Tuesday <laughs> <laughs> exactly so be okay with sharing your story whenever you're ready if you choose to be okay with sharing your story because there are people who want to support you and then also want to get to know you yeah that's just, those are three yeah. really awesome piece of pieces of advice um, so to kind of close out, obviously I want to thank you so much for taking your time and sharing your story. It's incredible. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you, you do on the horizon. I know that there's amazing things coming. My son's going to have to read your books um, and because he, <laughs> he needs to learn a little bit about saving and, you know, things like that. But let everyone know who's listening, where they can find you at, where they can purchase your books or do a workshop, anything. Where can we find yeah. you? Yeah. So head over to the wealthplayground.com. Um, I have my shop and store there as well as um, if you awesome. want to inquire about more information, there's a form there. And then also at the wealth playground.com or sorry, at the wealth playground on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Jasmine, for being here. It's been an absolute honor to talk to you. Congratulations on uh, your success in Iowa and thank you. many, many well wishes for the future. I know it's not the last thank time you. we're going to be hearing from you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Alyssa. And thank you so much to Warrior Rising. I do appreciate it. Absolutely. And to everyone listening, this is Warrior Voices with Warrior Rising, the premier place for veteran entrepreneurs. Need more information? You just visit our website at www.warriorrising.org. We'll see you next time.